a playlist original. All right, everyone, welcome to episode three of Back to the Blockbuster Presents Deep Dives with Owen and Gaius. My name's Gaius. <laughs> I am Owen. <laughs> That's Good Owen. To be back. I know this one came up kind of quick. Even though this is like bi weekly, it kind of felt like this one came up pretty fast. Uh, I know it uh, did. It did. But it was good because I think that we're kind of hitting our stride with these picks and it's starting to get like some interesting movies. And I, I am glad I have picked another one that you had not seen before. So I yeah. feel like I'm doing pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He uh, actually did pick one that I haven't seen. Thankfully, I've heard of this one this time it wasn't yeah. like the other one where it was like i hadn't heard of it and hadn't seen it um but yeah um you know uh, just a little bit of the response to the second episode and kind of what you kind of mentioned when we were recording it uh they liked that it was like different from the first one it wasn't like you know just a rehash of like oh they're just gonna like break it down scene mm-hmm. by scene like i mean each movie will be different and they actually like that you know the pick was something lighter so it kind of can tell that all types of movies are going to be discussed on this thing it won't be yeah you know just one type of film so uh and then that along with uh, the regular show uh got us back in the top five on good pods for film let's reviews go. So, let's so go thank you guys but owen would not be satisfied until we're number one that was like never, a bit never. that was like a big thing when we like we're starting this new show he's like we got like we gotta get back to number one gotta we get wore, back to number one that's the we goal we were number one on there for a few times uh so yeah you know with the power of two shows we can do it yeah we got this <laughs> we got this um well you know the we always make fun of the whole like uh, banter thing that we have to do, where it's like, "Oh, what did you do this weekend?" But actually, this <laughs> weekend, we, we actually this weekend we were not together. We didn't see each other, so mm-hmm. that there is a you know, it's not fake this time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, um, I was in Big Bear with mutual friends of ours, and Owen was back home in Hermosa, and uh, yeah, we, so there's that. Uh, what did you do this weekend? If anything, did you watch anything? Did you catch up on anything? Yeah, so um, this weekend, I actually kept it pretty chill, didn't do too much, but I did start Yellowstone for the first time. So I had actually not seen it before. Um, I caught the first episode. Um, <clears throat> our friend Andrew was like, hey, dude, if you haven't seen this, you got to check it out. So I watched the first episode um, over at his place, and it was really, really good. I uh, really enjoyed it. I wasn't sure how much I was going to enjoy Kevin Costner. <laughs> but um, I think he does a fantastic job. I think he does a really good job. Um, the actress who plays Beth in it, I th- can't remember her name exactly, but she's just apparently she's a fan. In- she's a fan favorite. Apparently, everyone so like loves good. her. Just like, yeah, it's just like she's completely diabolical and evil, which they even say in the show. It's like you can't be her <laughs> because she's willing to be evil and yeah. do uh, bad things. <laughs> Beth, Beth Dutton, by the way, I just looked it up. She is a she is a fan favorite. I, I don't watch it. Uh, but I've heard of uh, really good things about it. And I mostly hear about her uh, from a lot of people that really love the show. Yeah. Like they said, she's a scene stealer for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, I've never watched it. Um, my mom loves it, but I'm always leery of like things that my mom recommends to me. So like, yeah. I was like, I, I don't know. Like it's, I thought it was like, I got like nighttime soap opera vibes from like the previews, but other people I know that like it say that it's a little bit like that, but not too much. Like they, like the writing's really good. And the acting's really good. Um, I don't I think it's it really nighttime soap opera um, but there was an interesting thing I was uh, at work today. I was talking to my coworker, was telling him that I was watching the show. He actually went to college at Montana State, I believe it is. And so when college game day was coming around to do like the football uh, announcing and stuff, they actually went to Montana. And apparently Montana had says has said no to Kevin Costner doing things around the show. Like they that state doesn't want to be associated with the show at all. Wow. And so like that was super interesting to me to kind of hear that because like the show is technically about preserving the land and not like being around, like not developing it. But maybe the state actually wants to move forward and progress and become a little bit more developed. I, I honestly don't know, but I just that, that was a very interesting sort of fact that I heard that. They don't really want to be associated with this whole uh, this this whole interesting show, which, but um, I, I really enjoy. It. I think it's fun, and there's definitely some messed up scenes and some some action that's pretty good. And so yeah. there's a yeah, it's I mean it's kind of like Family Dynamics. It's like Succession, where it's like you 
love your family, but you also hate them because they're trying to do what's best for you. And so there, there's a little bit of those vibes kind of coming in. Nice. Uh, yeah. Um, I, I know it's like one of the few shows on like TV that's actually increased viewership with each season. Like it gets more and more popular each season. <clears throat> um, of course there's been like spinoffs for it too. Or like there's, you know, too uh, many. There's, there's, there's like, a lot now. There's been two now, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think eighteen eighty three, and then nineteen twenty four, four or something like that, somewhere in there. Uh, Harrison Ford, and I uh, think it's is it um. Yeah, Harrison Ford, oh, Helen Mirren on on the nineteen twenty four one. I'm sorry if we're getting that wrong. Uh, yeah. And then uh, in eighteen eighty three, had like Tim McGraw and Faith Hill, and like, um, yeah, you know, I I went out there for uh, with Joe Blow when they. Uh, premiere that in vegas and it was people were obsessed with it before they even got a chance to like watch it and it was just because yeah. it was associated with the yellowstone um you know i think i'll give it a shot because too many people have like told me that it's good and yeah uh, I, I really like it. i think you'd enjoy it it's it is long episodes i think the i think the pilot's like almost an hour long so it's definitely not a quick quick watch but watch. <clears throat> i know 1883 is actually a lot of people like it better and like it okay. a lot more than the original yellowstone so and it's the prequel, so maybe that's like maybe a good place to start. Who knows? Yeah. Uh, and by the way, uh, Owen asked for my Peacock uh, uh, to yeah, be able to watch to watch Yellowstone, <laughs> and I called myself a subscription pimp subscription because like because <laughs> like everyone I know has at least one of my like streaming services. I think Owen has my HBO Max and my Peacock. Yeah. Now and yep. then I log into my Disney Plus, and there's so many names on it that I I kind of forgot that I've given them to people. So Netflix. I actually have your Disney Plus too. Did you see my um, Avatar character? Oh, you you made it uh, Zendaya. Zendaya. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been I've been meaning to like text you about this. I saw. It, I, I did like, it oh, as hilarious. a joke, and I was wondering when you were gonna eventually say something about it. I thought it was uh, it's, hilarious. It's hilarious, yeah. And then like I, think, I also like my my Peacock Avatar is Vin Diesel from like <laughs> the Fast Nine. Triple X. Oh, <laughs> like it's, it's so bad. Um, but yeah, yeah, I'll give it a shot. I mean, too many people have told me it's good. And uh, even though my mom usually isn't good with, because she likes a lot of like Tyler Perry stuff. And I'm like, Scandal. no. Yeah, 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 yeah. Stuff like that. And like, no, 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 no. But this one sounds yeah. good. So I'll, I'll give it a shot. Um, yeah. um, I think I got to watch the movie we're going to talk about today. And I also started watching The Last of Us, which is really good. Um, yeah. You know, I, I'm, I'm coming from someone, I, I've never played the game, so I don't know how... Um, accurate it is to that but from people i've talked to you and then other people on twitter apparently it is fairly a really good uh adaptation of the game so far uh mm -hmm. you know it's i think it's it, it's moments were really really tense like they're making a really kind of scary show and yeah. then um also props to pedro pascal who gets to be on this and on the mandalorian he's been, well, like, two i saw something too where he keeps he's kept his um like streak now he's never been on a show that's less than 89 percent on tomatoes oh good for him i mean <laughs> yeah. yeah he he Which knows how to pick up. impressive but yeah yeah i was impressed with this i've been impressed with the show so far and uh because you know these kind of these i guess the premise could i mean it has been kind of like done before in like different ways uh, so everyone's it's hard done to be zombies around. everyone's yeah. done everything and they call them all these different weird names and everything like that which gets a little but i actually did see i i haven't seen it yet but i saw a um sort of a, a clip where they're kind of talking about how the virus started yeah. and it really is a really good description of sort of how things can sort of like theoretically realistically come about uh right. instead of just being like oh this guy it's like the cure for cancer and it went bad like yeah, i am yeah. legend and i was like yeah, ah, right. come on like <laughs> yeah <laughs> like there's some bad ones out there but I, I i did see a clip and it looked like it was pretty good but um i think that that show i'm i'm really excited to start to start watching it too but I saw something that um, before, like, I think when, when they were in discussions to start making a lot of these shows and movies based around video games, PlayStation actually created a subdivision or a new department called PlayStation Productions. And it was kind okay. of to basically make sure that none of their creations um, became sort of dismantled within uh, the actual creation when it came to TV or film. And so, oh, that's, like... That's good. <clears throat> And I mean, obviously, like some people have a different take on Uncharted, but it was insanely successful. Uh, right. People really, really liked that movie. Um, and now The Last of Us, like even sales for the game have gone, have skyrocketed since the show came out. So I, I think yeah. that like, that's a really good way to do it because it kind of keeps the integrity of, 
of not only the game, but also like makes the show um, kind of exactly what viewers are looking for. Cause even if you, especially if you play the game and you start watching the show and it just kind of doesn't really turn out to be what you want, then the game can sometimes even be like, ah, oh, like now that I don't really even enjoy this as much. So I, I think that's a really good idea to kind of keep, keep that thing in a, in a very tight, tight picture. Well, yeah, yeah. You kind of keep it in house. So you kind of have like a little bit more creative control over like what they're doing. Uh, that's good yeah. because, you know, honestly, because when you hear like video game adaptation, it's almost never uh, looked at fondly. <laughs> like I, well, I, you know, all the Mortal Kombat's except for the last one. I, I <laughs> were pretty bad. <laughs> yeah. It's just, it's so, I mean, it's, I don't know how, like, I, I ask this to more people who play video games more because I don't play them at all anymore, but I do, I am aware that, like, a lot of video games have, like, a vast, like, a huge narrative to follow, right? And they, like, you know, it should be easy to, like, adapt that and, like, don't, just don't change too much. Don't fuck it up. Um, but it, there's also people, dialogue written as well. Like, I mean, it's yeah. different when you put it on, but, like, it's literally mini movies for cutscenes that sometimes even happen. So, like, I think that's why people are not excited for something like this next season of The Witcher is because they weren't excited or they weren't interested in following the game. And right. so like, that's why Henry Cavill was like, I don't really necessarily want to be a part of this. If you're not going to follow sort of the heart and and, and soul of, of why we even got started in this sort of thing. So it's like, kind of sucks if they don't really follow this, the same structure. Yeah, I agree. Well, you know what? It seems like with The Last of Us, they've really gotten it right with, uh, video game fans because everyone i've seen that like were worried about it like they've are loving it so far so i mean that's good i mean it's probably and like you said it's good that they kind of kept it like in-house so they were able to like and i'm sure they were really really like wanted to be very like careful about how they adapted this because they know that everyone that is a fan of it will be like picking it apart with like a fine tooth comb so like you know i'm glad they took their time because it wasn't this has been in development for a while and Mm -hmm. uh yeah, so good for them. I like it so far. And like I said, it's the zombie thing can be a little like repetitive and you, you've seen it all before, but like uh, it's all in ex- the execution. The acting is really good. They have really good like creature effects on the show so far. Uh, it's just really well done. And uh, so kudos to uh, HBO for another, uh, have another hit on their hands. I guess is their second uh, most view premiere since 2010 after like House of the Dragon. So like, uh, mm. and then it, and it actually grew in viewership uh, uh, for its second episode so yeah yeah it must be uh really uh hitting a stride with fans so gaining steam yeah. yeah good for them uh so yes uh owen time this to week jump is... into my pick yeah this is your pick this week and it uh, is my pick this week and i had never so, seen it yeah. uh, so this week i decided to go with um a 2012 thriller crime movie called killing them softly this is a um a movie that I uh, kind of just like stumbled upon um, randomly. I think it was on Netflix probably like three years ago or so. Um, and I decided to watch it. And it was one of those ones that just kind of, I was like, oh, like this looks sort of interesting. I'm, I can't honestly remember exactly where I was. Probably just like sitting on the couch on a Sunday afternoon or something like that and decided to watch it. And I really liked it. I thought the dialogue was great. Um, but uh, basically this, the story is, Uh, When a rival crook, Johnny Amato, played by Vincent Curatola, hatches a plan to rob a card game run by mob lackey Marky, played by Ray Liotta, he picks a low-rent thug named Frankie, played by Scoot McNary, uh, to do the job. Frankie picks a less-than-ideal partner, Ben (laughs) Mendelsohn, to help him, but despite their combined incompetence, they manage to make off the mob's money. In retaliation, Marky's boss hires Jackie Cogan, played by Brad Pitt, a mob enforcer to eradicate those responsible. And um, yeah, it was uh, came out on November 30th, 2012, made 15 million, uh, or the budget was 15 million, made around 37.9 million at the box office, directed by Andrew Dominic. And um, yeah, let's get into it. I, I, I know you hadn't seen it before, so I'd love to hear your thoughts. Yeah, so um, I, yeah, I saw it for the first time today uh, before we uh, yeah. started recording this. Um, the only- my, I actually saw it today too, just to kind of refresh it as well. Yeah, uh, the only thing I really knew about it um, was that when it came out, um, e- even though it didn't make that much money worldwide, um, I think because Brad Pitt was attached to it, they were expecting it to make a lot more money. Um, 
and then uh it, critics really liked it it actually uh premiered the Cannes film, uh, film festival so i knew all that kind of stuff about it but um i what i remembered at the time that it came out it is it is one of 22 movies on cinema score to get an f from opening night uh audiences which it's crazy to, and like i and like during the like uh kind of fun facts part of this i'll maybe get into why this might have happened okay. um so i i kind of only knew about it like not being like what it was supposed to be like i'll make a bigger hit or like gotcha. it just you know they didn't really catch on everyone um i really enjoyed it i i well andrew dominic i i i've seen all three of well three of his movies i haven't seen uh chopper but i've seen uh uh the assassination of just uh uh was it jesse james by the uh coward uh henry ford and i saw blonde he has a really unique uh, uh kind of like visual style and mm -hmm. uh and you really get a lot of that in this which is what i loved i mean there are some might think it's kind of like artsy all the two artsy a little, a little but bit, i yeah. actually i actually <laughs> like some of the kind of choices they make because they made like certain scenes that wouldn't be that interesting a little bit more interesting uh to watch yeah. um he also wrote this movie and I want to give him uh, props. I know it's based on a, a 1974 novel, um, but I love good dialogue. And this movie has a lot of great dialogue in it. Um, mm -hmm. I was actually, you know, I, you know, you kind of, you, you kind of described it as, as being kind of funny when you said you wanted to pick this, but I yeah. like it, it, it does have some like really dark kind of black humor in it that I thought was it's super dark really and it's not really like hilarious. It's funny. <laughs> Yeah, it's I like really like the, subtle. I think the scenes that made me laugh are the ones where Brad Pitt is in the car with, um, I think it's Richard Jenkins. Is that his yeah, name? Dri yeah, yeah, he yeah. plays driver. This is his driver in the credits. Yeah, and just like them talking about the mob's corporate mentality now. Like, like so yeah. <laughs> scenes like that, just like that kind of thing made me laugh. Um, and uh, But yeah, keep going. Oh, yeah, no, I know. Yeah, actually, all the scenes with him, with Richard Jenkins, uh, were all like a lot of my favorites like uh because the way like the way he was describing like why like uh ray liotta's uh character like you know needed like to have to, they need to die right why marky needed to die and like it was just they were so it was so flippant like the way they were discussing like this dude's life but it, even before that when they were talking about after he got beaten up and they were explaining like oh like he has a broken jaw he's like broken teeth and then there's like an issue with his spleen and then they're yeah. like well he's and then he was like oh he's out the hospital now and they were like oh like, so i guess the spleen thing is right? it's going on right yeah <laughs> and the way they were just kind of like talking about it like it was just like just so it was just nonchalant. Really nonchalant that's i mean i a lot of the dialogue was like that throughout the entire film though and i really mm -hmm. I don't like I wouldn't call it like deadpan it was just really I mean I just loved how kind of flippant some of it was yeah like, you know like and I and I also like too I mean and I think maybe this could be why some people didn't enjoy it when they saw it you know when it takes place during the whole like financial crisis and then also yeah. like kind of like all the kind of political undertones which I didn't think were like heavy-handed I mean they were I think they were used in a pretty good way uh yeah to kind of kind of, kind of describe like kind of what period they're in and like, you know, <laughs> during this time where everyone needs to make money, like even yeah. these like cr even these criminals are like, like you know, like yeah. we have to do what we need to do to like make ends meet. And like mm -hmm. I, I actually like I actually like those angles and actually kind of makes the movie kind of resonate a little bit more even today, like in like the yeah. last you know, couple of years that we've had. Um I know I just thought it was really smart. I thought it was like really, really intelligent. And I wasn't, ex and I guess like I wasn't expecting that so much because I was trying, I watched the trailer, which like, makes it look like it's a bit more action packed than it, it yeah, is. Yeah, it made it look uh, super like kind of born style. Yeah, so like that's a little misleading. So I actually didn't really know what to expect. And I think within like the first 10 minutes or so, I was like, oh, this is not what I thought it was going to be like at all, like whatsoever. Yeah. Um, but I really, I really, I, it was almost like watching like, a series of like little plays so there's only like there aren't a lot mm -hmm. of people in scenes together it's usually only like two if that uh yeah you know and like you're it feel like you were just watching like just like really good actors kind of just like go back and forth like you're watching like a stage play and so yeah. that a lot and that allowed like the dialogue to really shine through a bit more and also allowed uh me to get really invested in like the characters as well like i really enjoyed that i understood them a little bit more and <clears throat> But yeah, but yeah, that was my Cliff Notes thought of like what I thought it was. Yeah, I appreciate any movie that has like really wicked smart dialogue, and there's a lot. And I'm surprised that like it's a very quotable movie too. Like I was surprised that like I feel like it should catch on more so people can actually like 
quote it more because I was like, I was listening to some of these lines. And I was like, I'm surprised people don't like reference this more. Don't uh, say that all the time. Yeah, yeah, like they need to like meet more people need to discover this movie. That's why I was. Do like, you have an example? Um, actually, I actually took one of my notes. Uh, hold on. I I forgot what the actual line was. It was it, James Gandolfini is in the hotel room with the hooker, and uh, yeah, and uh, Brad Pitt. And then, like, like basically, like, like dis- dismissing her. And he says something along the line, line, along the lines of like, "Next time, put the condom on with your mouth, and don't yeah. act like you're, and, and, and don't act like you're." And I forgot what the exact line was, but it was really, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like it was really, really funny. I, and, don't act like uh, your ass is like a treasure chest, treasure or something. Chest like or something. That. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was like hilarious, and I, uh, yeah, I really, enjoy- I really enjoyed it. It was a, it was a yeah, good Gandolfini game. definitely surprised me. I. I I'm wondering how many he, what he did after this, because you can tell he does look kind of rough. I mean, that's his character in the movie is that yeah. the guy's in a bad spot. He's drinking heavily. He's kind of like definitely been in better places before. Um, but like just the, I mean, the scene when they're at the, um, uh, like the lounge or whatever it the is. Lounge. And, yeah. and he, where'd you go to get that? And the waiter's like, what? <laughs> like he just doesn't really understand what's happening and uh he just like downs to martinis chugs at brad pitt's beer um yeah, yeah. and then he's just telling the story about how he's about to go to jail again and like you can see like it turns from a funny story to like like my like if i go to jail again i'm definitely getting divorced like he kind of has had the sort of like, he kind of has this uh rapport with brad pitt where like they talk like it's old times and he has these yeah. stories, people that they both know, but then he kind of devolves into like what his current situation is. And you can right. see his like sort of depressing inner monologue and like all these yeah. different things. And you'd see Brad Pitt just being like, damn, like you are not the same person that I remember. I mean, yeah. and that even goes along with the story because like he's in the hotel room and um, I love what he says to uh, Michael Jenkins. He's like, whatever he hasn't fucked in the last three days, he drank. He drank. Yeah. <laughs> That's another really good line. Too. That's another really and, good line. <laughs> and so and he's like, oh, like, do we need to um, like get rid? He's like, we need to get rid of him. Like we can't, we can't have we can't, him like, anymore. We can't have him anymore. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so everyone for a frame of reference, like he enlists him uh, to do one of the hits. And cause he like had a lot of respect for him. Uh, and like you, quickly realize that yeah that he's not uh, he's not the the hitman that he once was well, when and you first all- see him you're like oh this guy's the man you're like this yeah, guy's yeah, yeah. like and also like sopranos you're like this guy is like head of the like he's number one on the list he's more expensive right off the bat like they say and then you just see like oh gosh this guy's been this guy is not who you thought he was <laughs> yep uh yo speaking about like, i was thinking that too because uh james gandolfini passed away in June 2013, this came out November uh, 2012. Um, I wow. think he, I think he, I'm not sure when he shot. Um, he re- there was a movie in 2013 called Enough Said that he was in with uh, Julia Lee Dreyfus and Tony Collette. Uh, I'm not sure when he shot it. Uh, and, uh, you know, but yeah, it, I was thinking that too because I, I, when I was watching, I didn't know he was in it, so I was like. I, I was kind of going through like oh did like, you kind of get a pa- surprise you're like oh gosh James yeah, a little bit a, a little bit and I, and I i looked up when he passed away because i was like i couldn't remember and like i would come up on like 10 years in june mm-hmm. uh yeah. but yeah yeah i was thinking that too that he i mean the character is supposed to look a little rough but i was like i couldn't but tell if that was like there i mean i wonder if that's sort of maybe why they cast him like that i mean he's perfect for the role and, and whatever whatever situation he was in personally like whatever it is but he he just does a fantastic job uh just playing this alcoholic beat down ex-con man yeah or hit man um, or whatever it is yeah and he, i mean and he, like, well, only what two scenes it's i mean it's great i mean it's a great thing to have like an actor like that yeah. like kind of make an appearance in something like this and kind of blow it away i mean i love i mean as he slowly is in, when he's in that hotel room and brad Pitt's just looking at him and basically he's like all right trying to like are we gonna do this he's like he can't do this and then he he's just like goes i can't off leave on, i can't I he goes can't, off I can't on do it. yeah <laughs> he goes off on this like drunken like tangent that makes no sense and then like he's just like talking about a hooker oh, that he loved in florida Florida, yeah yeah he's like okay he can't do the hit like at all like yeah i i thought that was really really interesting and like and it's also crazy too a lot of people in this movie james Gandolfini passed away we just lost ray Liotta as yeah. well um also very good in this is uh in this movie too uh, and then Sam Shepard, who plays Dylan, uh, is also uh, has also passed away. So three of the 
movie stars are no longer with us, but I mean, like always a reliable. Sorry, who, I mean, who's the third one you said? Uh, Sam Shepard. He played Dylan. Oh yeah, Sam Shepard. Yeah, he also passed away. Um, I think it's twenty seventeen. Um, so yeah, I mean, uh, it's just crazy to think that like you know, so many of these people have put in such good work in a lot of movies in the past, and then like yeah, wow. Uh, just thinking about them like not being around. Um, uh, I I really did like uh, Ray Liotta's character though. And I thought it was like, I did too. yeah, I thought like, and I love the idea. I mean, of like kind of, uh, kind of setting that thing up where like you're sabotaging your poker game and then like getting kind of paid yeah, on the, the back end of doing that. I it was really is like, I mean, if it's based on a book, I mean, that's just like an incredible plot, like just in general, right. where it's like he rips off his own game and yeah. then brags about it later. And it, but enough time has passed that everyone thinks it's like kind of funny. Everyone's still making money again. Like yeah. no one's really that worried about it. Everyone's kind of made up for their losses. And so, but like my, I think the best acting that Leota does is when they're getting, when he's getting robbed at that second game. Yeah. And you could just see in his face, he's just like, even if like he's like, this is not going to be good. Like, cause he, right. you can just see like his facial expressions where it's like, this is not me. You can see all the other players are looking at him being like, right. you motherfucker. You like, this why? Again. like, you're really doing this again. Right. And um, like, it's, and I, I also love how Ben Mendelssohn, like he doesn't say anything because his Australian accent would just immediately give him away. <laughs> Boy, yeah. and, but it, it was crazy though, because those um, like sort of pantyhose masks that they're wearing, yeah. like it makes them look so, so like you can't tell it at what all what at what they look like what they look like yeah yeah and so like that that totally kind of got it for me and like I, I love the he's like it's a fucking shot off sawed off shotgun and he's like dude if i shoot this it's gonna kill everybody in the room, in the room yeah it's just it's like two buck shots like yeah it's not even an actual gun yeah um, I, just, I, like, I, the, the tiny little mistakes that he makes just to in order to do this but i just i love the plot point of Hey, it happened once. No one's gonna expect it to do him again. But even Brad Pitt's like, hey, even he's not fucking stupid enough to right. to do it twice. He automatically knows that he didn't do it. But yeah. from the eyes of the public, no matter what, you gotta rough him up and then eventually you gotta kill him. Kill him. Yeah, that's why I thought was funny when they're like because again, it's that like kind of like flippant nonchalant dialogue in the car. And he's yeah. like, Well, they basically gotta take him out. And he's like, Well, why? Like, why do we need to? And he yeah, was like, Why? Because he's he, like, like he, he didn't, didn't do anything like, wrong. He didn't, he, didn't, he didn't do anything wrong this time, but he was like, But the streets knows that he did it once, and they probably think that he did it again. So like now you yeah. have to. And he was like, <laughs> I love, he was like, I just don't understand. And then like, eventually he comes around. He's like, oh, okay, okay. I get it. Oh, okay, I get it. <laughs> I get it. I get it and yeah. then right after he's like, can you do it? <laughs> just like, yeah, exactly. Can exactly. <laughs> can you do it? Exactly. <laughs> you just do it. Um, yeah. And then, then also, I mean, I thought it was cool that like, uh, Frankie and Russell, uh, Scoop Mary plays Frankie, Ben Middleton is Russell. I guess it kind of proves that even like two idiots can like pull something like that off. Yeah. Uh, it's successfully uh yeah but you know like with most in most cases uh someone talks too much <laughs> and uh you know you also shouldn't partner up with like a heroin addict and in, in the case of like no. uh or, in, the uh, case yeah, heroin of, addict. in the case of yeah. russell uh i yeah i he does I think, a great job just playing this like just dirty australian like <laughs> criminal yeah, I, I, I really like when the first time I saw it, I was just I, I first of all, I loved his accent. I think he did a great job with that. Um, yeah. And like, just the no remorse that he has for anything. He's just like, oh, yeah, we're on this new bit snatching dogs. Oh, yeah. going <laughs> just like, no, like, just, so, just so matter of fact, just like, yeah, we're just stealing dogs and selling them in Florida. It's fine. It's yeah. paying the bills. <laughs> it's just totally. so like and they both met in jail and like yeah. there's like that's just the life of the criminal and i, I feel like like i i love the scene when um scoot uh who plays uh ben mendelson's uh, partner is kind yeah. of talking about it. he's just like listen like i can't find anything to do like i went to this place to try and get a job i don't have a car i can't get halfway across the city in order to do this like right. i'm i'm like a month away from walking back on jail and saying let me back in like, cause I, I don't yeah. have any opportunity for me to kind of do anything. Like he's probably a felon. You can't get a job. Can't like things. So at that point, like they have to resort back to crime. And I thought that that was sort of a, I mean, it's obviously not like hundred percent realistic, but there's definitely a lot of that out there where yeah. there's just not really up, especially in 2008, where it's like, yeah. there's just not a lot of opportunity out there. And so it's like, once you've kind of 
committed to this life of crime, you got to find ways to make money. And then, and if that, if the case is robbing a poker game, I guess yeah. that's what you're going to do. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, that's why I think it's really, I, that's why I'm glad that they tied it into the whole like financial crisis. Cause it kind of was like kind of showing that like, uh, everyone was struggling i mean at, 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 on some level and like mm-hmm. everyone was trying to figure out like what they needed to do and like you know not, not that you should like really empathize with the life of a criminal but like you know that that like ex- that dialogue exchange what you were just talking about like you know I've, I've been trying to like uh get something and do something and nothing's like panning out so like you resort to whatever you feel like you need to in order to yeah. make a quick uh buck i guess and that's what these guys uh end up doing um they're not smart um, at no. all, <laughs> particularly Definitely Russell. Not. <laughs> um, yeah. not, not smart at all. But um, I think I think even they're surprised that they pull it off when they pull it off. Uh, like yeah, they, they, yeah, like they don't even think that it's gonna actually like work. But um, yeah, I thought that was like uh, really, really like their dynamic was really fun to watch. Like, like they were really like really, I thought they were really good together. Uh, yeah, and their scenes together. And um, um, speaking of like the kind of stylistic choices and they, and they actually both uh involve uh ray liotta when the, the scene mm-hmm. where he's getting beat up um yeah first of all first of all i'd love I'd like to say up. not just beat up getting the shit kicked out kick yeah exactly um i like to point <laughs> like out when, like, he, too, when, like, when he throws up on the guy's shoes and the guy's oh, yeah, just like okay kick. how he's like how dare you and, and he then just, like, just goes and that is what sets him off he's like he's like fuck <laughs> well first they're <laughs> laughing at him for throwing up and then he throws yeah, it up on his shoes, on his like, shoes. <laughs> yeah yeah um i like that like with the exception of like some of the songs that they use in the movie i love that like there's no like intrusive like score or anything it's just all yeah. like kind of like dialogue and sound effects and all that stuff and you kind of mm-hmm. get that a lot during the the beating a little bit because it's just like especially with the every, rain yeah with the rain and everything kind of like cracks <laughs> like it, it's the way uh i just love like that uh, that stylistic choice and i also love when uh jackie takes him out the way that that is shot um yeah like we used like when you slow like uh when uh he has that truck kind of run into him and like yeah. he slowly hits his head like like on the windshield on and, and like windshield. slowly cracks and it slowly cracks i thought that was like really really uh interesting i know like really for, and for some people that'd be like artsy fartsy like film student tricks but it, i thought it was actually really cool to kind of like i mean we've, we've seen people get like shot in movies a lot by hitmen yeah. <laughs> and like you gotta try to make it interesting and i thought they did a good job of like uh or Andrew Dominic about making that well, visually. I also think the stylistic choice too was when um, Russell and the other guy are having a conversation about like he's basically saying like, oh yeah, there's a contract out on us, but they're both so fucked up on heroin that yeah. like they're you're, they're kind of going in and out of focus and like there's a lot of lens flares and sort of like it's going from like fade to black right and uh, like that part i thought was really interesting because like it was a lot and like kind of towards the end of it i was like can we just kind of speed this up a little bit but it really did show just the state that they were both in and just like like that was what they were looking for they wanted to get high and so like but just having the conversation when you're high on heroin about (laughs) oh yeah now there's people out to kill us kill us like that'll that'll snap you that'll uh, snap you out of your high pretty quick yeah yeah, pretty quick um what are your thoughts um what did you think of brad pitt like overall in this because like i i I, for me sometimes with him it's hard for me to separate him being brad pitt he he almost has like the tom cruise problem not as Mm. bad but like there's certain roles where you're like oh yeah that's brad pitt being brad pitt um I kind of want to know what your thoughts of him were in this, though. I think that he did a really good job, to be honest. I I thought that he kind of pulled off this. I don't want to say matter of fact contract killer, but it was more of a like, hey, I've I've done this many times before. And like he's like a a professional at it and he has specific ways that he wants to do things. Right. Um, And like I did believe his character, but there were some brad moments like at the very end when um he confronts scoot in the bar uh, i thought that was very brad pitt yeah um, that was a vibe, that was a vibe i got in that scene too <laughs> yeah that was like, very brad pitt where he's just kind of like hey i i'm the man like yeah yeah. <laughs> like yeah, exactly. yeah um but i think like overall especially when uh he's in the conversation with um uh richard jenkins i i, I think that he's really portrayed a good character and and like seeing his 
frustration with James Gandolfini when he's like, can't get him to stop talking. And yeah, he's yeah. just kind of yeah. like sitting there, just kind of being like, all right, like we're going to get to what we kind of came here for. Um, and like, st- but still trying to care about his friends. Um, I think he did a really good job. And honestly, like his, uh, the end of the movie is probably <laughs> just like my favorite scene. Just like the last part where he's uh, kind of talking to at, at the bar, basically saying like, yeah. hey, you're short, you're short and I need my money. And he's like, oh, you don't, you see that line that Obama said? Like that line's for you. He's like, listen, that's it's not good- true. If you think, if you think like, America is like one people don't make me laugh. Like America is not a country; it's a business. No, pay yeah, me my fucking great money. <laughs> money. It's a that's a, such a great line. Such a uh, great line. Actually, a really good little monologue too. I mean, that's why I'm saying to you, like, I'm so surprised that like more of this movie isn't like referenced or like quoted because yeah. like that during that whole end scene, I was like, I, if this movie was more popular, I think people would like really point to that like a lot more uh, yeah. in pop culture. I thought like I thought that was really. Uh, good as well. I also loved, um, you know, for everyone wondering why it's called Killing Them Softly, I actually, I actually liked how he explained like yeah. uh, why he does it, and like uh, when he, he basically says like you ever kill anyone, and then he says no, and he's like you get touchy feely, and he's like touchy feely, he's like emotional, not fun, a lot of fuss. They cry, they plead, they beg, they piss themselves, they call for their mothers. It gets embarrassing, and he's like <laughs> I like to kill, I like to kill them softly from a distance, not close enough for feelings don't like feelings don't want to think about them i thought that was really a good uh yeah. i thought that was really cool it's just a uh, job yes he doesn't want to have to deal with all the emotional stuff yeah yeah <laughs> i like that even a hitman's like uh that can get to you oh, <laughs> like you know like, like don't oh, plead with me like, Come on. Like, like you're just making this kind of harder um and that's why he I, does it like when he kills the um when he kills squirrel like yeah i mean that's the only part for me that i didn't think was that like as a hitman like that's a really far and tough shot with a shotgun like i did i didn't expect like that necessarily it. yeah um because th- that one just kind of i mean obviously he knows the guy so he wants to do something like, kind of probably from afar but right, that one right. i was just kind of like damn like that seemed like that would spark a lot more like public interest if you fire off a shot well, it's like it's like really loud so like, I thought like immediate, immediate attention to like what you're doing, and then if and anyone I, looks out their window and they see a bloody dude on the ground, and then another yeah. guy, wa- and then the guy walk up and shoot him in the head, like that's yeah. probably gonna gonna call the cops. I like after he shoots him, and there's like that moment of like silence, like you're like, all right, he's dead, and then all of a sudden you just hear him go, uh, like he's groaning, and you're like, oh, that's the way. Like, uh, okay. Dude, the the shotgun blast in the back of the head. I I mean I. I knew that was coming, I guess, but like I wasn't expecting to see it open up the way it did. Yeah, <laughs> like, that was pretty. Graphic. I was like, Jesus! Like, you know, for a movie that doesn't have a ton of action in it, there it's really violent when it is violent. The Ray Liotta <laughs> death is super violent. It's violent, yeah. I mean, like, you, yeah, it's aggressive. Um, yeah, and even even when he kills Scoot, like in the um, garage, like in the garage. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah, that, I was that like, scene. That scene got me too because it's just like he's kind of toying with this guy and the guy thinks that he's getting off scot-free. He's like, Oh, I did him a favor. Like I helped him with this. Like I'm going to be okay. And then he just gets shot. And then Brad Pitt just starts wiping down all the (laughs) handles and the steering wheel. Doing all the things he told him to do. Like, you know, like you have, don't forget to do this. Like, yeah, I thought that was, I also love when he takes the keys and the guy's like, Oh, I was going to keep it warm for you. He's like, I was going to keep it warm. He's like, no, he's like, no, no, I'm not seeing people get it warm too early. (laughs) I, I also love when like they're leaving the scene and like he's driving too fast and he's like slow down and he's like keeps going fast and he's like slow down basically slow down and he's like he's like do you want to fucking drive and it's just like, just pull over. Them, like stop her. yeah and they switch oh uh, yeah i thought that was really i thought that was really funny that was good. um that was good. actually i did kind of feel bad uh when he went a bit especially i mean like clearly he was like in they all i mean they both were in over their heads i mean russell of course yeah. ends up getting arrested you know whatever but like yeah. uh and deported um but like that one was because like i i knew that he wasn't gonna let him go right you just know just no. based on you who, just know. who jackie is at that point that like he's not going to let him go but no. then there's is this false sense of like oh like maybe he might because the way he's talking to him and like kind of walking him through what he needs to do and like you know and even when he was like speeding too fast and he's like basically calling him like kid like slow down like he's talking to him like in a endearing kind of way um yeah um kind of but grooming yeah, I, him kind of being like hey like this is what you got to do like but yeah i kind of like i was like when i was sitting there watching it i knew like 
when he got out the car, I was like, he's gonna kill him. But I was like, where? I was like, when is it gonna happen? And I was how? Like, how is it? Yeah. How? And then I just saw the gun. And I was like, yeah. Like and he just popped him right in the head, and it was just yeah. so, also very. And graphic. then four more shots just straight. To <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, like, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, I was like, like I think he enough. got him, man. I think, I think he got him good. with the first one. <laughs> yeah, I was. Yeah, that was. I thought that was. Uh, yeah, the whole, that was the one. The one that got me. But uh, yeah, I mean, judging on who Jackie is, you got you knew he wasn't. Can't yeah. leave anyone. Uh, that's like leaving the witness, basically, right? Yeah, <laughs> so definitely. like, yeah. So he couldn't do that. Um, I kind of want to go back to the um, political references, like because yeah. they. They have a lot of different ones. I mean, they have Bush talking, they have Obama talking, they have a bunch of different people, sort of two sides talking about the treasury. Um, right. <clears throat> and the way that I kind of interpreted that was like, everyone wants to hear what the politicians have to say about it because they're just hoping that they're going to fix it. Right. But like, right. the way I kind of took it was, it's all just talk. Like, it's all just like politicians talking, promising us things that right. like, at the end of the day, like you said, you're on your own in america right. you're on your own and so like yep. I, that's kind of the way that i took that dialogue was like re regardless of like all of these different things that you're hearing in the background and hoping to happen as the outcome like at the end of the day you really just got to fend for yourself yeah i agree i actually like the way they used um a lot of the political messaging and how, like like how they did it like whether it was just like just like listening to it like on the radio in the car or like hearing it on like tv and like mm -hmm. it kind of was like uh it reminded me in a way like like 25th hour used 9 11 as a backdrop for like what was going on in that movie yeah. and like what what new york city was like at the time uh you know that movie was made and you know spike lee wanted to like cr create a movie that was set in new york but then not ignore like what was going what on was in new york yeah. in that time so i, I kind of got the similar vibe with this where it's like all that just kind of was like reminded you of like what period they were in or what mm -hmm. of the world was in at the or, what was in at that point and kind of hearing yeah hearing all that kind of like hopefulness from like one politician like you know all this change that you know all that you know, other stuff and yeah. but yeah you're right it is like at the end of the day for a lot of people unless they see that change it's all talk so yeah. like and, and like i i really liked that part of it because i mean it's a balance because i think the I, maybe some people thought the politics was overhanded or like kind of like heavy-handed in this I thought it was just right though. I didn't think it was like too much of it so. to distract from like, you know, what was going on. Like at the end of the day, you're watching like a kind of dark comedy, like crime thriller, right? So it's it yeah. is like not to be taken too seriously. Um mm -hmm. but you know, the circumstances that they were in were, you know, realistic and you know, kind of like everyone's kind of fending for themselves. And yeah. Speaking I, of which I think the most random scene is when Brad Pitt's walking to the bar to meet with um, uh, Scoot. Dude. And that guy is like in the background being like, get off my block, get off oh, my yeah, block. Go block. And yeah. then he gets shot. shot. Like, just, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I've totally forgot about that. I was just, and then Brad Pitt doesn't turn, doesn't say yeah. anything. I was just like, wait, where are they? Like, what yeah. is going on right now? It I was like, yeah. forgot about that scene when I saw it again today. So I was like, I mean, I guess it's kind of done to kind of be, I mean, I laughed. I mean, I don't, yeah, I laughed. So I, was like, I don't know if that was like the wrong reaction to have, but I, yeah, I, I kind of took it a couple of ways where like, okay, the, the neighborhood or whatever is like fucked up. This is what's going on in the neighborhood right now. I also like that. Of course he's a hit man. He's seen and he's seen it all. So him just walking by it and not even giving it like he's a heard gunshots. Thought, he's not worried. Yeah, that made it funny to me too, that he's going to like, eh, like whatever about it. Um, but yeah, I think it kind of works a couple. I thought that was really funny too, like because I wasn't expecting that at all. A, and, it was just so random. I because I, like I mean that's the only thing you're hearing as you hear him get out of the car is the guy's just like mouthing off, and yeah. then he just gets gunned down. Yeah, <coughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I you know I to circle back a bit about Brad Pitt in this. Um, first of all, I thought I got I thought he was going to show up like a little sooner because I you know it's a it, it's promoted yeah. as like a Brad Pitt movie, right? Yeah, um, he's on the cover. He's on the he's front. On the, he's on the poster, uh, pinching a shotgun, guys. Uh, yeah. Which is which probably he does why for one scene for about for thirty scene, seconds. Which is probably why the general movie going public when they saw it was like, "This is not it's the like, movie." God, was probably, what the hell? Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I made that reference about you know sometimes he can be too Brad Pitt, um, but you know I he's Brad Pitt is really good at um, delivering kind of like 
very like condescending nonchalant dialogue he has really good like comic timing but but in this having that and then also being like i believed him like in the role yeah, though. like definitely. i i actually like kind of like i think uh a few people movie reviewers that reviewed the movie said that like he relies like a lot on his like movie star kind of charisma in this and like it's more of like his mm-hmm. screen presence that's more forceful and i think he kind of does use his like screen mm. presence to his advantage and like in this where like you know for a long time when brad pitt was like starting like brad pitt was he had that problem that uh when you're a good looking guy he had like you know the pretty boy syndrome where it's like oh can he actually act he actually had yeah. like to deal with that a yeah. lot when he first started and it took him a while to kind of kind of shed that i mean it kind of started with yeah. seven and it got a little and then, and then he got nominated for 12 monkeys i think like a year after or maybe a year or two after seven came out mm-hmm. um and you know it, it's interesting you kind of see like his progression over time and like the uh the movies that he has chosen to make and like you get yeah. something like this like well, you he know, produced this is not, it too I and he that. produced well. it yeah he did he produced it i mean he had already worked with andrew dominic uh in 2007 and uh from what I read, uh, Andrew Topic just texted him like, "Hey, I have this part in this movie. Are you interested?" And he just texted back, "Yes." He's like, I'm so in. that's how that you know, that's, <laughs> that's how that that's how that deal was made. Like, you know, I don't need to read the script. Uh, I'm just like, yeah, I trust you. Well, the way I see <laughs> sort of pretty boy, I sort of see his like hot Brad Pitt in this movie is like, right? I mean, he's dealing with so such low life degenerates. That yeah. like when he shows up on the scene, it's just like, well, this is like the guy. Like this is like right. the guy to clean up the mess. And right. he's he works for like the big boys. He works for a serious serious people, where all the other people we've seen so far are like low level crooks. They like they're dirty. They haven't really amounted to much. And so I think that that kind of plays to his favor in this in this movie. Yeah, I think so too. And and he's able to kind of like gritty it up a little bit and like actually make, make it believable. Yeah. His goatee too is not bad. <laughs> yeah, goatee's not bad. Goatee <laughs> is on point, Mr. Rabbit. <laughs> yeah. I uh, know. It, 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 all, it all comes down to like, you know, the look, like, you know, how you deliver the lines. Like, you know, yeah, like I said, like sometimes he can be a little too uh rat pity sometimes, but like and then other times he can like kind of pull it off. Like uh like I, I thought he pulled it off pretty well in this, uh for the most part. Yeah, I thought he was really good. And well, I, I, yeah. I mean it just comes off from his movie it's like he's like hey are you the guy that dylan told me to be he's like do you see anyone else here to meet you you do yeah exactly. <laughs> like, you're it's raining and i'm walking up to your car like do you yeah, really, exactly. like yeah i'm the guy that i'm the guy that's meeting you you dude uh God, like i mean i know we talked about it already but every scene that he had with richard jenkins is amazing is like they were both really like good. like richard jenkins character is like so like it's like very soft and very like you know kind of like soft-spoken and like doesn't really quite i feel like understand what what this world is like he's just kind of like yeah to make these things the happen too. he's the middle man he's like i gotta run it up the chain they're a yeah. little they get a little um they don't really want to do murder nowadays he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. what's going on like what is happening nowadays and then and then he's like yeah i know it's just like no one's in charge no one wants to take a role he's like is it a committee like, yeah, what is yeah, it? What's yeah. going on? He's like total <laughs> corporate mentality. <laughs> yeah. I just love yeah. that whole interaction. And that's and that's how he's looking at it. Like, I mean, like that's why I love when he's trying to explain to him, like, why you know, or he has to die, and he's just like, I don't understand why I don't get yeah. why this is happening. And like, he's yeah. like, kind of like, yeah, I want to say in over his head, but he's like, clearly doesn't know what this business is completely about. And he's just well, like, anytime oh, he whatever. mentions <laughs> anything with money too, anytime he mentions anything with money, he's like, oh gosh, seriously, he's like, it's gonna cost fifteen for me. Uh, yeah uh, and then it's like and he's like oh like really he's like make him fly coach and then yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, then when he's, and then when he's talking about the the hooker that they're going to hire to get him in trouble he's like oh, a grand a grand yeah yeah it's like, <laughs> like, Jesus. He's talking about all these expenses he's just worried about yeah he also makes a reference to the money when he's like uh they paid him what thirty thousand at the end uh for uh yeah and he was like where they weren't even gonna pay you for the kid and i convinced him to <laughs> like he was like like the, how like stingy they kind of are with like the money but yeah. but it kind of but it kind of all goes along with like again like tying it into like the financial crisis is just smart like they're all everyone's what being he, very I mean, tight. even yeah he what? mentions it too he's like the, um something or something like that like what did he he even mentions it at the end it's like it's a sort of um like 
time for talking. change in tax or so, something yeah, like they, that. Yeah, yeah, basically, basically yeah. 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 Yeah, I mean, like, that's why I thought, you know, even amongst criminals and thieves, like, they're so, like, you know, I they're pretty, uh, they're <laughs> pretty frugal. Very, they're tight with their money. And then, of course, like, I want to be paid, like, for what I was, you know, contracted to did. do. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And, like, and I, I, and I love when Brad Pitt comes back from the bathroom and it's just like, it's just so, like, deadpan about, like, like, that wasn't everything good. No, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, it's not good. <laughs> There's only this much in it. And he's like, and the way he explained it to him, like, oh, <laughs> well, this is why. And they weren't even going to pay you for the kid, but I convinced them to. <laughs> like, well, the yeah. first thing he says is like, are you going to count it? He's like, I got to go take a leak. He's obviously yeah. going to go count it. Go like, count that's it. Yeah, why yeah. he went to the bathroom to do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I thought that was, yeah, I thought that was really, really funny. Um, yeah. God, are we, like, you know, it, you know what's funny is like, I feel like we were missing something. But I don't think we are because like it's a really, no. this is a very breeze to watch, guys. It's only like an hour and thirty seven minutes, uh, yeah. And it and it flies by. I mean, I guess like for those who are probably expecting a more action packed movie, I guess it would be disappointing. But I still thought it moved at like a pretty like it's a really good quick pace, pace. I think like yeah, it didn't like it never felt like it dragged. No um, not at all. And like you know, I I thought that. The character interactions make the movie interesting and like funny and like you know it's a lot different from like i mean there are a lot of movies like this made uh of course and i and and you know we made that reference to like the whole zombie thing with last of us there's like a lot of like crime movies made about hitman and heist and like all this other stuff so it's kind of hard to like make them like uh stand out or stand make them out. interesting but i think they did that pretty well with this where you know maybe like the hits aren't all that like you know, they're a little cliche, whatever. Like, that's just a part of the genre. But, like, the road to getting there, I thought, wasn't. And then, like, the dialogue, and I thought, wasn't. Like, everything else kind of kept it very smart and fresh, I thought. Yeah. It, and, like, you know, it, it just kind of sucks that I got lost in the shuffle a little yeah. bit. Yeah, and I'm glad you got to see it for the first time. Yeah, I mean, I am, too. I mean, I, like I said, like, we, I had heard of it. I even remember the poster with, you know, Brad Pitt and the shotgun. Um, yeah. By the way, I think they thought they could just sell it on that, <laughs> and that would be good. Um, it made a profit. <laughs> it did. It did make a profit. If you count like the worldwide total, it did make a profit. Um, uh, but you know what? It, 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 the reaction to it, at least critically, wasn't bad. Um, it has a seventy-four percent fresh rating on Rotten Tomatoes. Um, uh, now we did make a reference earlier that, or I did, that it is one of twenty-two movies to receive an F cinema score from opening day uh, moviegoers. And it was actually, hold on, it, and that wasn't the first movie in 2012 to actually get that. There, I think there were like three other movies in 2012 that also got an F. So it has the Ooh. distinction of being one of them. Uh, one of them is some, The uh, Devil. Some tough goers. Yeah, The Devil Inside was an, uh, it opened in January of 2012. It got a uh, an F cinema score. And then I think- Was that a was horror one. movie? Was that the one where- um it's a horror movie it's like, like a found a, footage like uh a demonic possession movie it's really i remember bad. seeing the commercials for that and it freaked me out and i'm glad i never saw it <laughs> yeah uh i remember when i saw it i because like the trailers were good and then but then i was like so guys it's always a bad usually a bad um omen if a studio holds the review embargo until the day before or the day mm -hmm. of because they know that like they probably have a really bad movie um mm -hmm. and in the case of the devil inside they lifted the embargo on opening day on the friday so like i saw it opening night it was a packed theater and it in the, it opened the 30 million dollars it made money opening weekend it fell like a ton of bricks after that but i remember when it was over there was a black guy I, I know he was black because I could just hear in his voice <laughs> behind me, <laughs> behind me. And that was like, what the fuck was that? That's all he said. <laughs> and then like that just kind of, cause it's like, it ends on like such a silent note too. And that was the first yeah. thing we all heard when it was over and that made everyone laugh. Cause That's we all kind of collectively felt the same way. You know, like, I think what? in the case, what was that? I think in the case of this movie though, since it did, it got good early reviews out of the Cannes Film Festival. Um, it got good reviews from critics. I don't think like they were expecting like people to not be that receptive to it. Um, I kind of think it was an issue with marketing it and making it look like it was something it wasn't. Um, and this is also coming out during a time where like the whole like movie star thing is doesn't quite matter as much at the box office. Yeah. So like you know having Brad Pitt be front and center doesn't necessarily mean that like 
everyone was going to go do see anything it. good. Um, but um, I thought it was interesting. The one bad review <laughs> that I saw was from the late Roger Ebert, the guy with the you know two thumbs up. Um, he was he didn't like it at all, and I kind of think he missed the point. But he said it was a dismal, dreary series of cruel and painful murders cast in a similarly dreary and joyless cityscape. He also found the performance dependent mostly on the actors' established screen presences while pointing out improbabilities in the plot, such as how the mafia manages to support itself without crimes involving civilians. Like a captive animal struggling to free itself from a trap, they seem reduced to gnawing off their own legs. He didn't like it one bit. <laughs> um, well, the thing is, that review sounds like <clears throat> exactly what the movie's about. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I, that yeah. just sounds like a perfect description of what they were trying to portray. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so here's the deal. Roger Ebert, when he was alive, and he was a, he, you know, God rest his soul, he was a really uh, renowned film critic. A lot of his reviews, when, like, when the movie is supposed to be like this, like, if he can't find anything, like, likable about it, or, like, if the characters are, like, oh, if it feels so, like, dire and bleak, he's tended mm-hmm. to get bad reviews based on that, but it's, like, well, that's the movie they were the point making so that's the point yeah. so like you know it don't quite uh i don't always get his point he does this a lot with scary movies too um oh there was like so much was, gore i was like well, it, was, so- <laughs> it was scary and it uh was graphic <laughs> yeah there's so much gore i was like well it's a horror movie dude. i don't i don't know what you expect um yeah. but yeah jump like, scares <laughs> yeah but most people like understood it total film said it's a tough stylish violent and it's studded with stars um and uh the daily trailer guy gave it four stars out of four and he <laughs> call it bleakly electrifying so yeah it is bleak but it is very uh stylistically you know an arresting like really good movie i actually think that andrew dominic got um got it right i think what happened too with andrew dominic he was coming off of his first film chopper got like a really good reviews uh and kind of made him like the it like kind of new like uh mm. thing coming out, out, of, out of australia and then he, um, after that, he uh, directed, uh, let me pull up real quick, sorry. Uh, the Assassination of Jesse James by the Coward Robert Ford. Did not make money, but it got really good reviews. And mm. Casey Affleck got nominated for Best Supporting Actor uh, in that movie. So, nice. like, you know, um, he, has a, he had a pretty good pedigree, I think, uh, coming into this. And, mm-hmm. but I also think, I mean, I guess at the time you wouldn't like, you, he wasn't like a name enough for you to be like, oh, like, I yeah. no, I'm not. I'm no, I'm not gonna get like the action movie that they're trying to sell me on. Like if like I think now if you yeah. heard his name, you were like, oh yeah, I this is not gonna be like a typical like crime thriller. Yeah, um, but I think they did try to like kind of cover up, um, kind of what the film was because it probably wasn't a tough sell. Um, yeah, but you know, I think it eventually uh, found its audience uh, in some ways. I think so hopefully, uh, I think some. I think some people, uh, I, I wrote, or well, not wrote, sorry, I did not write it. I read <laughs> something. Uh, <laughs> yeah, because I'm going to say the Los Angeles Times. Like, I don't write for the Los Angeles Times. Um, yeah, not yet. Not, not yet. Um, they actually wrote a good piece about it in 2020 and said that, like, it is more, it felt more topical in 2020, like, uh, than it probably even did in 2012. Um, wow. And, like, and they were kind of saying, like, you know, these movies that are, like, flops at certain points like in certain years you know years later they kind of become relevant again when like themes in them are like more like relevant in real life right and like i think uh the guy who wrote the article was saying like you know encourage people to revisit it because it kind of hits even though like like we're saying like it's kind of like a dark comedy it's funny but like a lot of the themes kind of hit a bit more even today and the fact that we're still kind of like in that kind of like uh situation a bit like you know yeah that that many years out um Mm -hmm. makes it a bit more relevant um yeah definitely today's world um i know that we uh tend to tell you what people are up to so i will everyone knows what brad pitt's up to i'm not gonna update you on uh (laughs) what he's done since then since this movie he's done a lot he's he's good um after this movie though ben mendelson um has become the he's the Hollywood guy from, bad guy yeah he's like he's a bad guy in everything uh yeah uh you know he bad guy uh, in um ready player one bad guy yep. in uh rogue one one rogue one uh he uh on the show netflix show bloodline he's also not a good guy <laughs> um and he won a uh, primetime uh, emmy award for a senior supporting actor in a drama series in 2016 for that show very good show i thought it got canceled way too soon but i think they actually mm. 
wrapped it up the way they wanted to wrap it up but it's a really good show yeah. if you've never nice. seen it he also um joined the uh marvel cinematic universe playing talos and captain marvel and he also was in spider-man far from home and he will be reprising that role again in disney plus uh series secret invasion which premieres this year so he has done quite a bit since the since this uh richard jenkins has been on a lot of stuff he's like a go-to like character actor is always popping up and everything uh oh, yeah. most notable most notably since this movie he got nominated for an oscar in 2017 for the shape of water um still a really weird movie i i, I can't <laughs> yeah, I guess. Just, <laughs> we'll just leave it at that <laughs> yeah i and i love guillermo del toro and i'm just like I, I i just can't get into it <laughs> I, I can respect it though Yep. Uh, and then, and then, sadly, like we pointed out, uh, James Gandolfini, uh, Gandolfini, Ray Liotta, and Sam Shepard have all since passed away uh, since this movie came out. Um, mm-hmm. But um, of course, they leave behind a very good filmography. In the case of James Gandolfini, also some very, very great TV. If you guys have never seen The Sopranos, uh, you should. Um, what has uh, Scoot McNary been? And I feel like he's been in. Oh, I almost forgot him. So um, a lot of really good stuff. I I really enjoyed him in um just just in general as an actor. Yeah, I feel so like I haven't he, seen him in a lot. So he was in uh, Argo, uh, Twelve Years a Slave. Uh, right. Gone. He's in Gone Girl. I don't remember who he was in Gone Girl. I have to like. <laughs> he's also in uh, Batman versus Superman: Dawn of Justice. Mm. And he's and he's done a lot of TV. So he uh, was on the AMC period drama Holt. Uh, halt and catch fire he is on true detective he was on narcos mexico and the netflix western miniseries godless um yeah he stayed he's, busy he works he has worked steadily now our boy andrew dominic who directed who wrote and directed it um he today as we're recording this uh, andrew dominic got nominated for a fuck ton of razzie awards uh in case you don't know what the Razzie Awards are, they uh they come out the nominations come out the day before the Oscars, and they honor the worst bad movies and uh, film. Bad stuff. Uh, some people think that it's cruel. Um, I, I think it can be because like last year they nominated every role that Bruce Willis was in in 2021, and they found out later that he actually was sick, and they rescinded that nomination. <sighs> uh, yeah, like it poor taste. And then this year. I don't think it's their fault. It's not their fault, but it's still just, that's not okay. (laughs) It's not okay. Um, And then next year, I'll get to Andrew Dominic in a second, but this year they nominated a 12 year old for worst actress. This is a little girl from Firestarter, which I'm sure will not do anything for her self esteem. And I think it might make her a target for like bullying from other kids. That's horrible. I don't think it's cool to like nominate a 12 year old girl or boy. Just imagine. Imagine you get like your first role. You're so excited. You're in a movie. You're a preteen. You're about to be a teenager. And then they're like, yeah, you suck. <laughs> yeah. Um, so today, uh, our boy, Andrew Dominic. Wow, that's directed- awful. <laughs> yeah, it's so bad. <laughs> that's so bad. It's so bad. Actually, that might be one of our outtakes this week. <laughs> that's really it is Wow, that's awful. just so sad, man. <laughs> yeah, I can't imagine. Like, you know what? I just imagine that girl's parents trying to shield her from like everything on the internet right or now. Or just cheer her up. Just being like, hey, yeah. like. It's okay. We thought you did great, even though yeah. the movie didn't do well. Like, like. Yeah, yeah, you know, like, they probably were able to hide bad reviews from her, but this is like pretty, like, that's just mean. Uh, I, I, I'm, it's, yeah, it's pretty mean spirited. But well, Andrew Dominic is going to get older and see all this stuff, and it's just like, it's just. <laughs> she may never want to act again, dude. I, know, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, killing a girl's dream. <laughs> dude, this is great. Um, oh, gosh. Yeah, you know what? I, I think that's horrible that they did that. But uh, yeah, uh, Andrew Dominic. Uh, also directed the, the uh, Marilyn Monroe biopic Blonde for Netflix. Uh, Blonde is not a, it's a fictionalized version of her life. So it's not like taken, there's artistic liberties taken with her life. Um, yeah. A lot of people have complained about it, said that like it kind of exploits her, over sexualizes her, exploits her trauma. Cause like Marilyn Monroe did go through a lot and, uh, mm-hmm. in, in, you know, coming through the ranks of Hollywood. Um, but his movie especially from female critics especially because they were like this is not the right person to have directed a project like this he uh he got it pretty bad from a lot of critics for this film uh other than anna de who is actually the only benefactor from this movie right now because she's being nominated a lot because she's really good in it and you know she's probably like well i i came out of this pretty cool um but but it got nominated for worst picture today and worst director 
it got a total of eight nominations at the Razzie. So um, mm. not good, but like, I'm going to just share what he said to people that like complained about it. Um, he blamed it all on uh, US audiences. Uh, he is from Australia. He said everyone in the US hated the movie. And then he says, now we're living in a time where it's important to present women as empowered and they want to reinvent Marilyn Monroe as an empowered woman. That's what they want to see. And if you're not showing them that, it upsets them, which is kind of strange because she's dead. <laughs> the movie doesn't make any difference. Wow. Any other way. <laughs> no, it's not funny. Well, whatever. The movie doesn't Damn. make any Straight difference in one gate. way. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that could be how I read it. I don't, even Damn, know. I, don't know if, I don't know if he said it like that. Maybe I read it wrong. <laughs> The way dead. you said it was just like, <laughs> get over it. She's dead. Like, she's dead. Wow. My uh, God. <laughs> yeah, I'll just I'll leave the quote at that. Everyone's mad about that. Um, that's where yeah, he that's, is kind of. That's not home. the best response. <laughs> yeah, it's not. Um, <laughs> it's horrible. But you know, especially when he's like, "Fuck the U.S." Like, you guys yeah. didn't get it. You like, guys didn't uh, get it. Yeah. You guys didn't get it. Oh uh, yeah. I mean, uh, I will say, like, even in the dialogue and killing them softly, there's some pretty like messed up dialogue towards women like yeah even just like is. the opening scene when ben mendelson's talking about like some of the girls that he's gonna try and sleep with, with yeah. and then james gandolfini talking the about hooker, like the, ho- uh, the, the hooker. hooker like yeah there's some, there's some pretty like racy things that they that he says towards the women and i like after you kind of mentioned that about the director i was like damn like he doesn't really take any liberties here not at all uh i, I also love the way brad pitt looks at him when like she, the hooker's like talking His back to eyes him like wide and then like, like he makes a comment basically like you know you can end up, basically end up dead for like popping your mouth off like that and Brad yeah like, looks at him like the fuck dude like, well he says down. carved up and that's carved even up. worse yeah 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 um so that's <laughs> what, uh, it's like whoa man relax yeah that's what andrew dominic is dealing with right now but he doesn't seem to care he like he's happy he's pleased with blonde i'm sure anna darmus is pleased because she's probably gonna get an oscar nomination tomorrow so like you know, at least he directed her to that, uh, yeah. potentially. Um, so there's that. Um, all right. So here are, should I say fun facts? Because some of these might be like kind of, one might be depressing. Here's just, just some facts. facts. <laughs> here's some here's facts. facts about the movie. <laughs> about the movie. About, the movie. about <laughs> killing them softly. All right. The Turkish former minister of culture found the movie so offensive that he told the press that he wanted the age bar for this movie to be raised from 13 to 18, or if possible, remove it from theaters altogether. <laughs> Well, it's R, so it's already yeah, seventeen. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know how it is like it, like how the rating system is in other like countries and countries. stuff. Like how it works. Yeah, um, but apparently he was very, very offended uh, by it. Um, despite being listed in the main cast credits, Sam Shepard has under six minutes of total screen time in the movie. I didn't well, even, like. I, I'm trying to remember. I, what pay, scene I, I, I can't remember. I don't even remember what like. What they, was he in? What scene they like? They in? so they referenced Dylan. Uh, they go to that person. I forgot whose house. I think it's is it Marky's house, and like, ah, oh God, I can't remember actually because I had to look up what Sam even, Shepard looked like. I, mean, it's I don't even remember what is it like. Is he the um one of the hit guys that's with uh like Kenny? Is it that? Oh yeah, so yeah, yes, it is. Yes, so he isn't in it that much at all. Um, he looks Allie? completely different. Yeah, yeah, and is it and like crazy? That's six minutes too. Um already mentioned one of only 22 films to have an F cinema score. Um, that nah, doesn't deserve that. Uh, Lanera Washington, um, who is the only woman both seen and heard in the movie, and she has one minute of screen time. I believe that is the, uh, the hooker. James, with James Gandolfini, yeah. Uh, Richard Jenkins' character is never seen standing. He's either sitting in his car or sitting on a bar stool. That's interesting, too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's set in and around Boston, Massachusetts, but was filmed entirely in Louisiana. Mm. Uh, Brad Pitt and James Gandolfini have previously appeared in movies before. They were in True Romance in 1993 together and The Mexican in 2001. And oh, the other movie did the F summer score in 2012 was also a horror movie, Silent House uh, with Elizabeth Olsen. Uh, mm. Let's see. Mark Ruffalo, Sam Rockwell, and Javier Bardem were considered for various roles. I don't know which ones, though. That's a really good roster of actors, though. Yeah, wow. Um, Brad Pitt and Richard Jenkins previously starred together in Burn After Reading. I forgot about that. I just watched that again recently, and I, it's just, it's so... I've, I've, been wa- I've been watching it since it came out. Like, Dude, I don't it's know. just, it's so full of dramatic irony that it just makes me want to just... It's so ridiculous. Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't know if I actually like it because everyone is such a terrible person in that movie. Like yeah. George Clooney is so weird 
in it like <laughs> i i don't know if i even like it see i think if you review movies you'd be like oh, roger ebert <laughs> like oh i don't like, like anyone in this movie f <laughs> yeah i don't know if I it, but it was just like i just had so much anxiety watching it Shit. Um, okay, this is why I won't call these fun facts. We'll just say facts. But this one's really interesting because I, as you probably saw when the movie opens, this was distributed by the Weinstein Company, and uh, everyone knows the Weinstein name uh, for better or worse now. So after working with producer Harvey Weinstein in *Inglorious Bastards* in 2009, Brad Pitt approached Weinstein and asked him to produce *Killing Them Softly*. Pitt was aware of the sexual harassment allegations against Weinstein many years before this movie was filmed. Pitt's ex-wife, Angelina Jolie, said in an interview for The Guardian in 2021 that she fought with Pitt because of this movie as he knew that the producer had sexually harassed Jolie early on in her career, but he still wanted Weinstein to produce the movie anyway. And Jolie said that it hurt her that Pitt was happy to work with Weinstein despite knowing he had assaulted her. Jolie never worked with Weinstein after he harassed her and avoided attending promotional events for Killing Them Softly. And this is the bigger kicker. Before his relationship with uh, Angelina Jolie, Brad Pitt dated Gwyneth Paltrow from 1994 to 1997, who also accused Weinstein of sexually harassing her in the 1990s while she was dating Pitt, who knew about it since Pitt Paltrow told him when it happened. According to her in an interview on the Howard Stern Show, basically he he shut, he shut him down. He went up to him and was like, hey, leave her alone. But I just thought it was interesting that like, knowing all this, and he still wanted to work with him. And that was like a lot of people in Hollywood at the time. Damn. You know, um, even you know Gwyneth Paltrow got a lot of shit too because he she was in a lot of Miramax movies back in the day. Miramax was Weinstein's. Uh, they were like the Oscar bait company. Like if there was a Miramax movie, it was going to get nominated for an Oscar. She won her Oscar for a Miramax movie for Shakespeare in Love. Uh, he had you know sexually harassed her. She worked with him again on the talented Mr. Ripley. He produced that. Uh, she has explained it though, like how they did it. He never con- had contact with her while making movies again for him. But, you know, some people think that, like, still, you're in a movie that he produced. Um, That's such a tough thing to even talk about. It's just, like, I can't can't believe that he continued to approach Weinstein. Like, I mean, I guess that was just Hollywood at the time. Yeah. So, like, when I was watching watching this, I saw the Weinstein company logo card. I was like, ooh, this this part hasn't aged (laughs) too well. Uh, Yeah. Yeah, it never um, will. Every time, anytime you see it now, you're just gonna be like, ah, oh, God, dude. I think I think it's kind of tainted a lot of the, his movies. I mean, yeah, I mean, I I love Good Will Hunting. That's a Miramax movie. Town to Mystery. I mentioned that Miramax. Like he made that he for how awful he was. He produced some really great fucking movies. It kind of sucks that like now it's just like attached with like all of that kind of stuff. Yeah, I don't want to say it kind of sucks. I mean, it's like it's an awful thing that happened and you can't ignore it. Um, yeah. And yeah, it's just, it's tragic that a lot of these great projects and stories are kind of looked down upon. Um, yeah. And I, I mean, I, I do think that it, it should come with a sort of, I don't want to say disclaimer, but I mean, there's history behind each one of those. Yeah. And um, I'm, and I'm only speculating here. I kind of feel like, you know, like we said, he was a good producer. He was able to get movies made. He was able to like sell movies well. I can only guess that Brad Pitt really wanted him to work on this, probably knowing that it might be like a tough sell to like yeah get out there. Uh, I think yeah. he was working with him more as like a business person rather than financier. Like, yeah, rather than like Harvey Weinstein, the man. Um, mm-hmm. That might not be a good excuse, but that's the only thing I can kind of like speculate on, like why he wanted him to produce it. There are plenty of other people to go to. Yep, <laughs> Hollywood is full of producers that would be eager to work with you, Brad Pitt. Lots so. of money <laughs> in Hollywood. Could have gone yes. somewhere else. Exactly. Um, all right, so we uh, have some questions. Uh, like I said, we're going to uh, collect a lot of these and kind of like randomize them and like answer them uh, at the end of a- every episode so you can get to know us a bit better. So, you know, uh, one for me, one for Owen, one for the both of us. There is a bonus one that... Um, <laughs> My friend sent me because he wanted me to reference. Uh, <laughs> um, so <laughs> I'll, I'll read the question. Hold on. <laughs> I bonus guess. first. Yeah, I'll do the bonus one first to get it out of the way. Gaius, you got absolutely dragged for saying that you like Charlie St. Cloud on your last episode. <laughs> you laughed your way through it and didn't really get to explain why you liked it. Can you please explain to us why you actually like Charlie St. Cloud? Charlie St. Cloud. 
Um, Let's hear it. I, I, I did get dragged for uh, Owen dragged me during the episode. Uh, most of this, <laughs> like, um, I, uh, yeah, and then I put a poll up on G Reels and on Back to Blockbuster. I was like, is Charlie St. Cloud good or is Gaze crazy? And like, Gaze is crazy won both polls. Uh, <laughs> so there you go. Um, I will say this um, I have a little brother, and you know, Owen has an identical twin brother, so like, you know. Uh, but I think having a little brother and having like, when I watched the movie for the first time and like, I think I just was like touched emotionally by it. Like, Oh, like he loses his brother in an accident that he kind of thinks is his fault. And like, there's this like tangible connection that's like kind of keeping him around and he doesn't want to like disappoint his brother by not showing up. I won't explain the plot again. You guys know what it's about by not showing up to where he needs to show up to like continue their relationship after he dies so i was yeah. kind of touched by that part of the movie like it's you know if you yeah. have a little brother it like, hit an it emotional might, core it might resonate with you a bit emotionally but i completely understand and uh i i laughed too when i was trying to explain the plot so i mean it's fine <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, no one didn't help but he kept referencing him as like ghost brother and like i was like that made ghost brother worse. oh god uh, yeah sorry oh god uh, <laughs> Oh, oh, that Jesus. made me laugh. Yeah, <laughs> I explained it further, and you just like died. You're like, no, this is. <laughs> well, I laughed Although... when you mentioned it at first, and then you just started describing, it, and I was like, oh my god, <laughs> it was so bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! All right, at Cinemaniac94 on Twitter. Okay, this one is for you, Owen. All right. What is your go-to genre when you want to watch a movie? Are you more of a comedy, drama, horror, etc.? Uh, what do you tend to watch when you're by yourself? Um, typically, I mean, I think you can kind of even see it just in the first couple picks that I've made. Um, my typical go-to is sort of a suspenseful drama. Um, I do really enjoy like dialogue heavy and dialogue driven. Um, I'm the kind of person that I like to if I'm going to watch a movie, I'm watching the movie and I'm going to yeah. make sure that I'm like paying attention and I'm sitting down and like either lights off or just, I'm just going to be fully immersed. And so I think that like those kind of movies I think that like the drama sphere in, in terms of genre is so wide that right. they, like there are so many different avenues when it comes to something like that. And so like I do like that it can really spark a lot of different emotions in um in in just like an hour and a half or two hours and so whether or not it's like um something that can be um like make you cry sometimes it can make you laugh sometimes it can make you a little bit scared sometimes it can make you feel like a little bit or anything like that and then like i think that there's um there's so many different ways to tell a story through a drama yeah. that uh, I think that's probably my favorite genre. Cause once, once you get into comedy, um, I mean, the point is got to laugh. That's right. there for is like, it's you, that that's the point. Going to have some jokes that hit some jokes that miss. Right. Um, if it's an action one, you're going to have big, either sometimes CGI or like whatever it is, big, big moments. And with drama, you can kind of go anywhere. I mean, it can like, like when we watched Closer, that was like, yeah, insanely it like it was just a ride. Like, yeah, yeah. There were so many things that happened there. Um, so yeah, that's that's my answer. I'm gonna go with drama. Yeah, that's that's good. You know, it's it's funny because I was like talking with Jackson, who's like the new guy on the uh, other on the yeah. main show, and uh, uh, he was saying that his least favorite genre to watch is comedy, and I. I agreed with him only because like I do like good comedies, but like when something doesn't land in it, it really doesn't land. Like it could be really bad. Like it, like a really bad comedy is like really awful. Um, but like usually yeah. with like dramas and stuff like that, like there's usually something you can kind of like latch onto a bit. Like or mm -hmm. like you know, I agree with that though. I mean, I mean, I I I know that just based on like the movies you share with me or like the movies that we talk about. So like yeah, that's a really good answer. Um, Thanks. all right, for me at bottled up talk, <laughs> when are you going to use the show to get Owen to watch more scary movies? Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Um, you know what? I am, uh, actually, I, I talked to you about this when we were hanging out like a, a week or two ago. Um, 
I'm actually purposely not picking horror movies yet. I think I will eventually, but I think I just, but I think I want to like, everyone knows I love horror movies. So like, I wanted to use it as a way to like, kind of like pick other genres uh, and kind of showcase that a bit. Hey, now, listen, it's, your pick is your pick, man. You can take what you can pick whichever you'd like. No, it's true. It's but true. I will say, depends on how scary it is. You might have to come over and watch it. With watch it. With <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, yeah, I, I, yeah. Everyone knows I love scary movies, you know. And like, I can understand the thought of me being like, you know, every other week when, when it's my when it's my pick, like it'd be something scary. Uh, I'm trying I just my best to not sleep on Tuesday. On Tuesday, yeah. <laughs> no, so I, <laughs> no sleep at all. Um, no sleep. But yeah eventually um i'll pick some and like the thing is when i do it i don't think i will i will it won't be like typical like slasher stuff I, i'll probably go from something more like psychological rather than like <laughs> making you watch like friday the 13th or something stupid like that you know the thing uh, is like I, I i do like horror movies like i growing up as like a teenager like i could not stand them like i i was definitely super scared when i was a kid um but like now that I've, I don't want to say like grown up necessarily, but <laughs> I've definitely started to enjoy I me. Mean, I, I love things like The Strangers. I really like, um, uh, gosh, what is the one with Ethan Hawke? The um, oh, Sinister. Sinister. Yeah. Really, really like that movie. So like, there's there's a lot of them out there that I do enjoy. So free to take your pick when uh, when you want to do some horror. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I mean, you know, I'm gonna sit on it for a little bit, but yeah. Well, I- there will be one and there will be, actually be more than one but yeah i'll get to it eventually i was trying to you know i was trying not to be predictable <laughs> and uh yeah. doing that <laughs> like uh but next yeah. week's pick halloween halloween <laughs> all right <laughs> like, okay man cool <laughs> like oh uh, shocker great. shocker um for both of us at jill six i know that you're only into episode three now but is it stressful picking your picks when it's your week uh hmm, interesting i okay i'll say this i won't say it's stressful but i think i overthink it uh where it's like yeah. oh like like me you know, i know we we're only like three episodes in but like oh prisoners was like yours was like a heavy like drama and then it mm-hmm. goes down was like more lighthearted, like more comedic this one yeah. was kind of like you know crime thriller kind of dark comedy so i'm in my head i'm like well do i have to pick something completely different or can I just go back to drama? Like that's where that's where like my like head is when it comes to like it being my week, I guess. Yeah. No, I totally agree. And I think I mean I like the way I think about it is that I mean this is a show between, with you and me and it's not right. I mean the audience isn't picking it, so it's like it's what you and I like to watch and those are our picks right. that we get to do. So regardless of whether or not like we might pick a, a similar thing sort of week week after week. Like that's just what we like to watch. So right. I think that, I mean, when I pick this movie, I, I try to think of things that like, I know that I like, like not necessarily something that's like inception. Like I'm not necessarily right. trying to pick one. That's like a super popular one. That's been reviewed a thousand times that if you heard us talk about it, you'd be like, yeah, I heard that already. I've made that. Um, like I've made that point already. I've kind of right, thought right. of that theory, whatever it is. So it's like, I'm I'm trying to maybe stay away from that for now. I mean, yeah. I also don't want to pick Tenet because I love that movie and you thought it was an absolute bastard. So, <laughs> so, so it's like, there, there are certain things that Dis- like- Disaster um, of sound design, Jesus. <laughs> it, was, oh, that, it was horrible. It was like, so like turn it up but, really loud. Like, I can't hear the dialogue. And then all of a sudden it's like- And then, <laughs> like, like, fuck. But um, I, I think that it was like, it's definitely, I don't want to say stress, but it's definitely, I, I definitely take some time to try and- figure out what is going to spark a good conversation and yeah. and what's going to That's kind enough. of have some different elements in it that that we can sort of pick and i i mean we laugh all the time so no matter what we're going to find some funny things we're going to make some funny yeah. comments i'm never worried about that yeah. um but i think that um definitely have like it's it's always one of those things where like after you did your first one i was like oh shit i have my pick next yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> and like but like you said yeah we laugh through it i mean we laugh through the prisoners one and that is not a fun movie <laughs> at all it's not so funny like, it's not funny you know, so <laughs> like funny. so i i'm glad that we can still talk about serious movies and not have the conversation just be like super serious like we can like yeah there's, no there's definitely. still humor in it that's um, not our person- I, that's not our personality 
but yeah, I agree with that too. I think, um, I think even with just the three episodes and, and then what I'm thinking I want to do for my next one, uh, it, it really has like unintentionally, I think kind of like been like a showcase for like, I don't say smaller movies, but like movies that maybe like didn't catch on that much. I mean, prisoners made money, but like, it probably could have made even more money considering like the cast and you know the pedigree behind it, you know, it mm-hmm. goes down to make any money, uh, when it came out. <laughs> And this one, you know, this this movie was supposed to do a lot better uh, than it did, you know, because of Brad Pitt and like, you know, it having good early reviews out of the Cannes Film Festival. Um, but I kind of do like the idea, like, who knows, like down the line, you, you might pick something like an ex- Inception and that'd be fun to yeah. talk about. But Definitely. like, but we're trying course, to prove like said, that we're cinephiles. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're actual <laughs> cinephiles. And like. But like you know, like movies like Tenet and all that, or not Tenet. Sorry, Ugh, you just brought that back in my brain. Movies like Inception are like yeah. the dark, are the Dark Knight, or like I'm naming all Christopher Nolan movies. Are uh, yeah. I'll just name something stupid. Armageddon. Like everyone's seen all, the, all that, right? It's so, like everyone's day. Yeah, Independence Day. Everyone's seen it. Everyone's talked about it. Now it might be fun to like deep dive those because there's kind yeah, of like it ridiculous definitely will. And funny. Um, yeah. But I also do like that we've kind of like made it a showcase for like these kind of like smaller uh movies we're just getting started yeah 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 and that's the cool thing like i think that's another reason why we shouldn't stress about our picks because there's so many movies i know and like and like like, and if we yeah if we don't want to go with that one that week you're like you know you can circle back and like maybe do it when it's your turn next like yeah i know we're just uh it's not a competition even though i I think eventually we are gonna put a poll up to see whose picks were better i did not pick them better I did not want to do it for prisoners and Igby goes down because, like I said, Igby was going to get slaughtered <laughs> by prisoners. By prisoners. Um, <laughs> so you can't think after, that way, man. It's, it's also how the episode was too. It's not just about the. That's pick. true. It's about that's how the how, episode like, was and how we talked about it. That's true, but after so ap- episode four will be my pick, and then after that we'll start putting the pull up, to kind of see whose pick was better. Um, but it's not a competition. I think we all are teaching kind of each other, like I like I again like surprised that i have never seen this movie until yeah. today so like uh that was and i don't think i've i don't think i've would have like sought out to watch it had this not been uh your pick like i i've yeah. never it That's wasn't like one. i was, that was like, kind of one of the things we decided is, would be good for this yeah like i wasn't trying to ignore it i just like you know it just never yeah it just, just never got around to watch it but yeah um so yeah uh guys if you guys do want to watch um killing them uh softly i watch it on prime video but i got a seven day free trial for stars to watch it for free and i will yeah, cancel I just <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> i did it on that. the microsoft store i i rented it for like four bucks so yeah. i don't I, I couldn't find it anywhere free for streaming so if you want to pay to see it then I, I mean i highly recommend it it's four dollars you could either get a double cheeseburger at mcdonald's or you can watch the movie yep and if you uh you know if you do have amazon prime and you don't want stars it is a seven day free trial so like watch the movie and then cancel it right after you uh, watch also i will say that the stars <laughs> edition to hulu uh-huh. like if you add stars onto hulu mm-hmm. the movies that they have unbelievable like i oh, I, really? I bought it for like two months or something like that and it's it's an extra like 16 or almost 20 bucks a month so i, yeah. I eventually ended up like canceling it because i wasn't watching as many movies but it is insane the amount of movies and the ones that you that you can actually watch on there. So okay. if you are watching a lot of movies, definitely get stars um, with uh, with Hulu, or just in general, just get stars. I'm gonna have to like email work and be like, oh, can we add that for me? Seriously, for I, 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 I reckon, <laughs> dude, I'm telling you, everything. Like if you look up a movie and it's like, how can I watch this? Stars has it every time. Wow. Oh, good. Well, you're like the official promo person for stars. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> good job. I am. Um, and I think uh, beginning with this episode, guys, too, um, I'm going to link a couple of uh, places that you can watch the movie at the bottom of the description of the episode. So if you guys want to check it out, uh, yeah, you're more than welcome to check it out. And uh, yeah, good episode three, man. I thought this was uh, really good. Let's and go. again, very different than like the previous two. That's how it's going to be That's different each time. I love, I love it. It's going to be different and, each time good pick so far we've uh we've liked each other's picks so far i think yeah people are waiting for the day where it's like oh that movie was, there trash. was like oh god that movie was terrible <laughs> i hated so what you gave absolutely it. Yeah. absolute trash i thought it was gonna be with igby goes down uh when you're snoring and stuff and you're like okay <laughs> it got better nah, that's those first three minutes i was like dude this is yeah, gonna be a nightmare watch? <laughs> yeah uh but yeah um 
the next up will be my pick. Of course, like we said before, we won't tell you what the pick is during this episode, but we will uh, be posting up some uh, guests, uh, like trivia, maybe quotes and stuff to see if you can guess the movie. Uh, yeah, you got, three people got the Igby Goes Down one uh, off the first uh, off, the, off the first uh, hint. Uh, and one of them was actually Jackson, the new guy. So good job, Jackson, uh, for getting that right. Nice. Uh, as being a part of a new part of well, the Back to the Blockbuster family, um, but yeah, uh, it's well, it's time for you to do your uh, outro honors. <laughs> I hate it. There we go, <laughs> guys. Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate you guys listening to the third episode of Gaius and Owen Deep Dive. Um, this is one of our favorite things to do. We like to talk about movies, and um, yeah, if you guys want to continue to listen to us, um, just anywhere you can get podcasts. So Apple Podcasts is our biggest one. Spotify um google podcasts i think amazon probably has a podcast thing somewhere out there i, uh, I just so found it out today that they do yeah anywhere <laughs> uh, so if you want to just keep tuning in i like to listen on spotify personally um but yeah just keep tuning in we're trying to get to that number one spot on good pods i won't be satisfied until we do but at the end of the day we like to support everyone out there on good pods uh, shout out to everyone who's doing uh, everything out there and and as always shout out to playlists they're just our huge partner and we, we really appreciate everything that they do for us uh, and they they let us do stuff like this, talk about movies. So um, just thank you guys for listening. Get stars. I promise you it's a good investment. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, please just keep on tuning in and uh, we will see you. I will see you in a couple weeks. Yep. Peace.